Hello and good day to you. Um, so today I'm doing a video on sandwich estimators. Uh, I think I have to explain what they're for in the first place and then I'm going to have a little bit of a ramble about why they're necessary because at least for me in the first place it was a bit unclear what they were for um, and I don't want other people to have that problem. So sandwich estimator is basically a different way of doing a linear regression. It's called a sandwich estimator because the matrix that it's is being calculated is sandwiched between two inverse matrices, which my matrix calculation calculations are not good enough to explain exactly what that means. I know you can do ordinary least squares uh, using an inverse matrix uh, calculation where you, you basically, it exists as a method for doing um, division within uh, matrix calculations because you can only really do multiplications with matrix calculations. Uh, but I don't really want to focus on the maths of what it's for. I want to focus on how you use it in R and what use you get out of it within statistics because I think that's really what anybody who's watching this really cares about. So this is another le um, another video on residuals. Um, statisticians use lots of long words and sometimes I think they're not very helpful for the non-specialist to understand what they're talking about um, and what they say the reason for the sandwich estimators and uh, these other things I'm going to show you is homo sedastic, which means that your residuals should have similar variance. And if they don't, there's something wrong. And I've, I've read a brilliant, simplistic explanation of this which I thought was just a breath of fresh air, where it it, it just said that if your if your if your model's wrong, then your general general linear model is going to be producing mistakes, and if it's if it's producing mistakes, you'll see patterns in your residuals, um, and you shouldn't see patterns in your residuals because if your model was right in the first place, uh, and it had a bunch of independent um, variables in then the variance away would be just random. It would just be mistakes. There wouldn't be any patterns to it. And so <laughs> there's, there's when you're reading up on this, you find lots of very long-winded um, explanations. Uh, you read things like residuals should not be correlated. With, that means they shouldn't have patterns. Uh, interestingly enough, they shouldn't be correlated, but it often happens with temporal data because um, the time sequence and uh, date order of temporal data often has a real hidden impact. And if you give into a general linear model some indication of the order of events, it often improves the model, but then changes the model for um, predicting future events, which will never take place in that particular date order and, and it doesn't it, it doesn't ever matter again but that was an interesting thing to learn about because it, it explains some of the things I've seen out in the real world uh, and was confused by uh, I've seen models basically leap uh, if, if you get if you if you're using a car key information coefficient or p test to work out what you should add next it, it, it will just grab anything that it can, it can use as a proxy uh, for time order which i found very interesting um you you know you you'll see these patterns when there's non-linearity going in your um, in your data and as per the name the general linear model you don't really want to be predicting non-linear data with a linear model um, you also have a problem with confounding variables where you've missed a variable out of your model and something else is taking the slack for it, i.e. Um, I think in the, in the in the video about the residuals I said about if it's Friday and you've got everything else every other day of the week in the model but 
not Friday. And so some events which happen on Friday happen to be used as a proxy for the average value of a Friday, which becomes confusing and pushes your model in the wrong direction. Um, and all this boils down to, well, what happens when my model's wrong and I want to use it for a hypothesis test or some sort of inference from it, but I don't, but I know that there's something wrong, there's something missing with it. Can I still use it? And what I got as a takeaway is yes, you can. You can still create use a sandwich methodology, and then you can use it to do a hypothesis test on the sandwich methodology um, to sort of. And an interesting name of this sandwich estimator is the robust method. <laughs> um, so I don't know whether you should be using this all the time. I've I sort of read this as. I, I think I'd need to get my head round, properly round um, uh, sandwiching a matrix calculation between two inverse matrix, matrix calculation. As I say, I don't know it well enough uh, to explain it. But when you've got the problem of um, that you haven't got the homocedacity in your data, meaning the uh, you've got too much variance going on in your residuals, this is this is this is the prescribed method of pulling some of that out. So the libraries you'll need to use is LM test and Sandwich. Um, I'm using uh, the real estate data again, and the first model I'm going to show you is is one that uses. Uh, if I get to the right thing. Uh, uses uh, the Y of the house price per unit area and it tries and predicts with house age. And as you can see here, there's not, there, there isn't the, there is homocedacity going on. And I had to check my notes because I can't always remember which way around that word, that word should be applied. <laughs> Um, there is homocedacity going on that the the, the 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 residuals aren't grouped together. The, 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 there's not a pattern that you can see that doesn't look random. And if we cycle for everything, now what happens if you find something when you're building your model uh, and it does does look a bit non-random? It does look like there's something going on. Well, there's a test you can do and then B you can save it using the we, we discussed sandwich estimators I don't know about you there looks like there's a curve going on there and my concern would be is that right have I built a general linear model with non-linearity in it that there's something as it gets to the end that it curves up and I mean, if you if you notice that it's just not it's just not particularly massively normally distributed. I think if you see the second one, but you can do a BP test, which uh, means the Butch Pagan test. It's a hypothesis test on the homocedacity. Um, th so what we would say this is actually homocedastic, as in. The, the variance going on in that in that, those residuals wasn't so much um, that we can sort of say that there's something else going on other than uh, just our model. So we'd 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 accept that that's normal, but if we hadn't accepted that that's normal and needed to still perse persevere with the sandwich estimators. Uh, the way to do it is the CoE F test, and you uh, put the VCOV and set it a sandwich, and you can get a good idea of the estimates um, from that. So you can still use the model, and the interest really of being able to do this, is how I've read it, is where you've got. A bad model, like like I said, the most 
blunt post or reading I found of this is your model's wrong, it doesn't work. You can use a sandwich estimator to sort of um, still use it to get some information out of it to work out uh, that even though it's wrong, uh, to correct, to sort of make it so I can use the p-values for um, hypothesis tests. And the reasoning here is um, most of the tests that you're doing in our, our student t-tests uh, where, where you've got a p-value in this. And you can do a... a um, let me find the command. You can do a GLHT, so a general general linear hypothesis test, uh, to sort of tap, check with how much your model represents that data. Now, if you were to do that with the broken model, because you're you've 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 done it as a in this t in this sort of manner, which would make it so it should be normally distributed. Um, the t student t-test won't work because if you go back to our hypothesis test lesson, uh, you'll have heard uh, you, you've got a few other options from the student t-test. You've got the Welch test and the Wilcox rank sum. And off the top of my head, I think it's the Welch test you use if uh, it's non-normally um, non distributed in this sort of manner. So that might be really not interesting for most people. I'm not sure I found it hugely interesting when I read it, but it confused me enough that I had to persevere and get my head around it. And I feel that actually now that I have it, I, when I went through the list, it was lots of really long um, statistician words. Um, homo sedacity, if you don't look it up and really understand it, you get afraid of it. But my takeaway from all this was actually there's things to do if your model's broken that you can still get information out of it. There's nice ways to A, test it with the um, uh, brooch pagan test. B, you can probably detect from your residuals that there's a problem. And C, the interesting thing I found about this is going down the list of um, you know problems that will cause your general linear model to, to break the the ones where actually they started to say well your model's broken and it's not going to work and you, you're not 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 only is it not going to work any of the numbers you get out of it are going to be wrong are things like exogeneity which means something is happening that's just completely outside your model that you've not included in your data um and outliers and they're they're, they're the two, only two huge things which could completely break your general linear model. Anything else like this, um, homo sedastic stuff, or the residuals not being correlated, as in, um, as in, well, the residuals shouldn't be correlated, but if your residuals are correlated and grouped together, it's because of some underlying course and you've missed out an independent variable and you can see a pattern in your data. And if that's happening, those sorts of things, even though you'd think that would destroy your general linear model, the, the really heartwarming takeaway from this should be actually you can still use the uh, coefficients from it and you can still use it as a mathematical model. You just can't use it for a hypothesis test. But you can with the sandwich estimators. And actually you can, that should that should make you feel a bit more safe to go and use it and play with it because you can't really make a massive error unless you're doing something very strange and just huge amounts of important information is missing from your model. So hopefully that wasn't too boring. I hope you feel a bit safer to try using a general linear model and thank you for tuning in and listening. Bye.